Greetings and welcome. I'm Helen Hempling, pastor of the First Christian Church in Bloomington, Indiana, and I'm here with my husband, Bruce Irvin, who is pastor of First Christian Church in Bedford, where most, but not quite all, of this service will take place today. By the magic of, magic of technology, a portion of our service will take place in the Bloomington Sanctuary. We're glad that you're here. We invite you to light your candles at home, to a reminder of the presence of the risen Christ in all of life. And now, come on in. It's time. As we gather in one spirit, we trust that the God of love and power gathers us in. Let us sing our opening prayer. The peace, peace of Christ, Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of life, 
even as we give thanks that you gather us in by the power of your spirit. We also confess that we are tired of life in an online and virtual world. And we long for a handshake or a hug or the gentle touch of a loved one. And so we pray for strength, trusting that one day we will gather face to face around your table of grace and love where all are welcomed and where there is always room for more. And we pray for each other, for health and safety and wisdom and for a sense of purpose and belonging. We pray for peace as we open ourselves up to new ways to be your people and your church. And we pray for this world that you so love, that one day its groaning will cease and that every corner will burst forth with the fullness of life modeled by your son, Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 12 through 24. Jesus had been invited to dinner by a leading Pharisee. He said to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, and for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. One of the dinner guests, on hearing this, said to him, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land, and I must go out and see it. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to try them out. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have just been married, and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you ordered has been done, and there's still room. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in, so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. The word of God for the people of God. It is good to be back in the pulpit at Bedford. I just wish that a bunch of you all were here in these pews. But anyway, we do know that we are one in spirit, even as we wait for that day when we can be one and physically present here in this sanctuary. Some of you will remember that during the days immediately after the 9-11 terror attacks, the skies over North America were closed to commercial aircraft. And some of the planes that were out over the Atlantic were diverted to Gander, Newfoundland, that island outpost of North America that's actually closer to Dublin than it is to Bloomington. Some 38 planes were landing in Gander, one after another, 38 planes containing almost 7,000 uh, passengers. And, and as they all landed there at Gander, Newfoundland, pulled up on the tarmac, Nobody knew what to do. These folks were stranded. They had nowhere to go. And then a miracle happened. 
The good folks of Gander opened up their, their houses and their churches and their schools to these strangers, to these folks who had come from away, as people in Newfoundland say about anybody who was not born on the island. They opened up their homes to these strangers, these folks who came from a variety of, of ethnic backgrounds and religious groups and nations. There were almost 100 nations represented among those nearly 7,000 passengers, but it didn't matter because the folks in Gander and the surrounding communities, they recognized these souls as children of God. They recognize these strangers as, as image bearers of, of, the, of the Holy One just as they were. And so they fed them and they housed them and they clothed them. They offered hospitality to them. Hospitality is one of the norms of the kingdom of God along with power and justice and community and generosity Hospitality is a kingdom norm. The kingdom of God is like leaven in the loaf of the world. It, it, it sits there perhaps unseen, but then it starts to rise and all of a sudden there is an abundance of goodness. That's the way the kingdom of God works. And that's how Pastor Helen taught us about the kingdom last Sunday. It, it, it rises up often unseen and then all of a sudden, a little bit of the kingdom is realized in that rich abundance. Hospitality is one of the key ingredients of that leaven from heaven, which is the kingdom. Now Jesus told us about kingdom hospitality in the parable of the great dinner that we heard just a few moments ago. Jesus had been invited over to Sabbath dinner uh, by one of the, the leaders of the synagogue, one of the leading Pharisees. And, and, and in fact, Jesus often found himself at dinner with, with, with folks, with, with the lofty and the lowly alike. They really valued Jesus' company. And so he's, he's at dinner with, with all sorts of important people, and they're having a spirited conversation about the kingdom of God. And, and Jesus makes the point that if you want to know what the kingdom is like, if you want to be in the kingdom, if you want to live in the kingdom, you have to invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind to dinner. Now, one of those guests took some exception to what Jesus said. He, he, he wanted to, to, to kind of make a case for the fact that there's room in the kingdom for, for everybody, even if you don't offer that kind of radical hospitality to those who are most in need. He said, no, no, Jesus, anyone who breaks bread in the kingdom is in good shape. That's what he tried to say. So, so Jesus, Jesus tried to remake his point by telling a parable. He talked about a rich man, a rich man who, who decided to have this wonderful dinner and, and he invited all of the important people in town, but they didn't show up. He sent out his slave to figure out what had gone wrong and, and they all had an excuse. They all had too many other things uh, on their agendas that they concluded were more important than gathering at this man's house for dinner. So, so, so the master said to his servant, okay, you go back out there and you go invite the poor folks and the hungry folks and the people who are least able to provide for themselves, you go out there and invite, and invite these poor and crippled and lame and blind neighbors and bring them in here to dinner. Jesus said, the kingdom is something like that. Jesus said that the kingdom is a place where, where even these outcasts, the, even these folks who can least provide for themselves can find food and shelter and warmth and acceptance at God's great banquet table. But when I hear this parable, I think of the homeless ministries that uh, both of our congregations have been involved in over the years. And you may have noticed during the passing of the peace that one of the groups that, that uh, we saw passing the peace are, are volunteers who were serving breakfast at the, uh, at the Shalom Community Center in, in Bloomington. Uh, just one example of, of how First Christian Bloomington has been engaged in homeless ministries over the years. First Christian Bedford as well has been engaged with our homeless 
homeless neighbors. And I, I think of these ministries and I think of, of our members who are involved in these ministries, but I also think of how easy it is to be like that guest who wanted to be reassured that you can get into the kingdom without offering radical hospitality to, to the homeless and to the poor and the hungry. I think of how easy it is to overlook our homeless neighbors, to walk right past them when they're sleeping on the street or when they're asking for spare change. I think how, of how often I walk right past them as if I can't recognize that they too are image bearers, as if I can't recognize that they too are children of God. And yet, in both of our churches, we've, we've been engaged in, in these homeless ministries, we've been reaching out to people because somewhere along the line we discovered that when you take the time to, to sit down with one of our homeless neighbors over a cup of coffee and, and listen to his story, or, or when you go out with, with, with one of our homeless neighbors and, and find an apartment for her, or when you go with someone to a job interview, and, and when you continue to walk alongside that person after he or she is employed and, and help them through the, the rough early days of a new job, when you, when you do these kinds of things, you, you, you realize that these individuals are indeed children of God just like you and like me and a little bit of the kingdom is realized. I think of a fellow whom I'll call Art. Two years ago, Art decided that, that the carport in the, in the parking lot here at First Christian Bedford would make a dandy emergency shelter during the summer months. And so Art and a few of his friends, each morning I would find them uh, sleeping in our carport. And, 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 you know, suddenly when it gets that close to home, you start to get a little concerned about these folks and you decide maybe, maybe we need to do something about this. So, so Art camping out in our carport helped two miracles to happen. The first one was that a number of churches in Bedford decided to get deeply involved in, in, in a homeless ministry. And, and, and the beginnings of an emergency winter shelter that we'd had here for a few years expanded into an every night of the week shelter with paid staff. And, and we began to provide a more stable place, at least during those cold winter months, for our homeless neighbors like Art. And the second amazing thing that happened was that folks weren't satisfied with just giving Art a safe place to stay uh, over the course of those winter nights. Somebody took him aside and, and, and actually a few people kind of came around him and found an apartment for him. And I have to confess, I was kind of skeptical about that. I was sure that within a couple of months, Art was gonna be back out on the streets. But two years later, Art is still in that apartment. Two amazing things came about because of, of, of Art sleeping in our carport. And now a third thing is coming out of all of that. As, as we begin to form a, a new homeless ministry called the Stone City Alliance for Recovery and Hope. In fact, the new board of this ministry had its first meeting here in Bedford this just uh, several days ago on, on Thursday afternoon. And, and we realize now that as we become engaged in the lives of our neighbors, of, of the folks whom Jesus called the least of these, yes, indeed, the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame and the homeless, we find that lives are being turned around and a little bit of the kingdom is being realized. They still keep in touch with the people of Gander. Some of those 7,000 people who, come, who had come from away, they, they still send emails and cards and texts, and some of them even come back to Gander to visit. Because you see, there's a bond that connects all of us. It transcends class or race or nation or ideology or any of these artificial barriers that we put up. There is a bond that connects all of us. And, and when we affirm that bond, when we recognize that we share with one another this, this status of being God's image bearers, a little bit of the kingdom is realized. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Bruce. We're now back in the Bloomington Sanctuary because we have something very special to do in this moment. You know, one of the ways that our congregations are practicing kingdom hospitality is through our involvement with the Explore program 
of the National Benevolent Association of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Explore is a residency program, and our own Ashlyn Reynolds served as an Explore resident a couple of years ago. And since last fall, First Christian Church Bloomington has offered hospitality to our Explore residents, Adrian and Miche and Kristen. We've walked alongside them as they explored what it means to live together in intentional Christian community and to engage in acts of service and justice and to make a difference in this world for the sake of God's kingdom. And so today, we say our goodbyes. But we also congratulate them upon completing their Explore residency program and thank them for being a part of our lives over this past year. Adrian, who has completed his work with Habitat for Humanity Restore, will return to Arkansas where he will be engaged in community organizing work. Kristen, who completed her work with New Hope for Families, has been accepted for a second year as an Explore resident. She has already returned home to Virginia. Miche, who completed his internship with Monroe County United Ministries, will return to Naples, Florida to work in social services. They are gifted young people, and we have been blessed by their presence in our life and our ministry. Let's hear from them just now. My favorite memory here uh, in Bloomington uh, and just in my experiences with Explore in general um, was actually kind of the first memory. Uh, we, the, the five of us, uh, the, the residents and Bruce, had all just gotten out of the, the van after an eight-hour journey from Kansas City to Bloomington, and we were like getting all of our stuff and you know I was I had just entered the church for the first time and I was feeling very lost and uh uh Judith Olmstead Grandma Judy uh came up to came up to me and asked if I needed help and uh I I introduced myself and I told her who I was and she just got this enormous smile on her face and she scooped me up into a big hug and she welcomed me and every and all of us into the church and yeah that energy has carried forward throughout all of my experiences with the church community and with my work site it's been really wonderful and i, I really appreciate it Hi Bloomington family, this is a video um, to just say goodbye to everyone, all my friends, the family that I made while I was there. Um, we didn't get to really say goodbye because of the coronavirus. But anyway, I'm going to put in a little pictures here and there just to, you know, show memories that we had. Here's one of the pictures from my many adventures before um, Fabiana left us. We really enjoyed, you know, y'all opening up the church to us and letting us live there. It was a very great experience. I want to thank Bruce for uh, taking us to the Tibetan Center for the second time around. We really enjoyed it. Um, this is me and Miche right here. Yeah. Thank you to anyone who ever took us grocery shopping. This is us in the kitchen cooking. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone. I wish we could have had a proper goodbye, but we love you. Thank you so much. Hey, First Christian Church family. It has been such a pleasure uh, being with you during this Explore year. And uh, your generosity, your support, and your overall Christ-likeness has gone above and beyond what I could have asked for. Oh my gosh, I must not forget this grand space that you have all invited us into. <laughs> where I've met God through art, meditation, fellowship. <sighs> Truly, I will miss this space and you all. And so as I move back to Florida to pursue more nonprofit work, specifically with immigrant families, I hope that I'll be able to stay in touch with you guys. So here is my prayer for you all. May the Lord's uh, face shine upon you and may you feel his peace like the clothes on your backs. And may you be protected through these very difficult and confusing times. I will miss you guys so much and I love you.
What joy. Thank you for sharing those video clips that give us little snippets of some of your experiences here in Bloomington. And blessings on each of you as you go out and serve in God's kingdom to be the leaven of hospitality and justice and service and hope. You really have made a difference in our lives. And so now, take what you have received here and go and be a gift to the world that God so loves. We invite you who are watching today to join us in a, what we are calling a virtual laying on of hands. As you know, uh, when we first welcomed our Explore residents, we surrounded them with a prayer and we reached out and laid our hands on them. And so now we want to do that today in a virtual way. So I ask you as you feel comfortable to just hold your hand up as we offer this prayer to our Explore residents. Let us pray. Wondrous God, your spirit has brought us together and enlivened and enthused our fellowship. Our prayer is that Adrian and Kristen and Miche go in peace with our love and our prayers. Go in strength with the gifts we have shared in our time together. And go in joy with the assurance that the bonds of our love in Christ cannot be broken. God, May your love surround them and keep them and hold them now and forevermore. Amen. And so now we have a little parting gift for you, a token, a few tokens that we hope you will uh, rem help you remember us and show our affection for you. We've got a daily prayer book that actually that, that we used on a regular basis while you were here. We've got a framed photo of the Tree of Life window that Ashlyn took and, and Cindy framed for us. And we have our famous water bottles that everybody gets when you come here and, and we send goodbye, say goodbye to you. So again, blessings on you. Your giving is what makes possible ministries like Explore and so many more ministries within the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. And so we ask that you take a few minutes to offer your gratitude to God with your financial gifts that support the work of the church, either online or by texting or, or by mailing or dropping off your checks. It's not the method, but the mission that matters. We have freely received. Let us freely give. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for these gifts which have been given for the upbuilding of your kingdom. We give you thanks for the bounty that you have entrusted to us, and now we entrust these gifts to you, knowing that they will be leaven in the loaf of this world, knowing that they will go toward offering hospitality to those most in need, knowing that in so many ways, O oh God, you will use them to your glory through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Let's try something for a minute. Take a look at the table that is before you, whether it's a dining room table or a coffee table or a kitchen counter. Whatever is holding the elements of communion as we prepare to receive them in a few minutes. And as you look at that table, 
celebrate just now that by the grace of God, your table, this table, our tables together have become part of the longest table in the world. And it's not our table, it's Christ's table. Because Christ is a host, serving up unending portions of forgiveness and mercy, of wholeness and health, of grace and peace, of love and joy. The elements before you, the elements before all of us are reminders that Christ is sitting here with us, with you and with me, with all of us saying, welcome to my feast all of you. And so we remember how Jesus on that night that he gathered with his friends took bread and gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave to them saying, this is my body, it is broken for you. Take and eat, all of you. In the same way he took a cup and after giving thanks, gave it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, poured out for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. So take and drink it, all of you. Let us pray. Bless, O oh God, these symbols of your kingdom. Bless this bread. Bless this cup. Bless them so that, O oh God, they might be for us symbols of abundance, symbols of hospitality, that they might be for us reminders that all are welcome at this table, that you offer hospitality to all, that you feed all in so many ways, ways beyond anything that we can ever ask or imagine. And so, O oh God, we ask that you would bless us as well at this table, that we might know deep in our hearts that you are here, that the risen Christ is here, that the risen Christ bids welcome and acceptance to all. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Let us hold the bread and the cup as the choir sings the anthem. And then when the music is completed, we will partake together. So friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. All is ready, come and eat.
the bread of life for you. Take and eat. The cup of love poured out for the world. All of you drink of it. Let us pray. Gratitude, praise, hearts lifted high, voices full and joyful. Indeed, how beautiful it is, Lord. Thank you for your hospitality and for reminding us that we have a place at your table. You have put your life into our hands and now we put our lives into yours. By the power of your spirit, take us, renew and remake us that we might be servants in your kingdom of love that has no end. Amen. At the conclusion of this service, we invite you to go to our Facebook pages and where you can write a special word of, of thanks or memory to one of our Explore residents or all our Explore residents or, or, or leave a comment for each other or share a greeting and, and let us know your thoughts and feelings about the, ne- about the service. And the next Sunday, there will be another special Sunday because we'll be honoring our graduates. And today, the Bedford folk can honor our BNL High School grads in the Bedford First Christian Church parking lot. Just drive through anytime between 2 and 5 p.m. and wave to AJ and Selma, and they will be standing, yes, six feet apart in front of the church. You can wave to each other. We can wave to each other as we drive by as well. And so let's continue to stay in touch with each other throughout the week and all the the ways that we can safely do so. And now, however, let us sing our closing hymn, Bless Be the Tie That Binds. because there is a world out there that is full of lost and lonely folk. There is a world out there that's full of people who are poor and hungry and who need hospitality. Go and greet them. Go and invite them in. Go and share the peace of Christ with them. And as you do so, you will live out the kingdom of God. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Amen.